Good morning, all. Hope you are able to hear me. Yes, sir. Good morning. Yeah. Able to see the screen? Yes. Yes. Thanks for the confirmation. So, yesterday's session, we saw what is SAP. Right? And who are the founders of SAP? Before we proceed, any questions from anyone? Any questions? Okay, so here we call SAP as an ERP. What is an ERP? What is an ERP? It's a centralized software. Sorry? Okay. I'll come with the ERP. One second. Actually, we are, we are talking ERP. This is this particular era from 1980 onwards. The complete IT era is considered as an ERP era. So what exactly ERP? ERP is nothing but enterprise resources and planning. Enterprise resources and planning. So what do you mean by enterprise? Enterprise could be anything, a business, an organization, right? A company, X, Y, anything. Okay. So anything is considered as an enterprise. Resources are nothing but what are the resources for any business or any enterprise or any company any organization is it's what exactly erp explains us so what are the resources for any organization is it's men money machine and marketing and few more resources clear so enterprises are nothing but your business organization company or anything is considered as an enterprise and same time resources resources means nothing but to get success of any enterprise depends on its resources like many without men any organization will not run without money without funds no organization will work machine without machine no organization will work and same time marketing advertisement kind of thing so these are the four m's are considered as a resources and what do you mean by a planning what do you mean by a planning planning is nothing but any organization the erp explains how to utilize how to utilize the available resources the available resources in fuller extent in fuller extent by increasing the revenue and by reducing the cost is considered as a planning. So that is called ERP. ERP is nothing but enterprise resources and planning. Enterprise as we discussed, resources for any enterprise, these are the resources. 
and this will explain how to, this will explain us how to plan to utilize the complete resources in fuller extent right by decreasing the cost and by how to increase the revenue without wastage of these resources will be explained by erp so in market in the market there are number of erps are available in the market number thousands of erps are there like for example if you take sap is one erp right arkil is one erp right jd edwards is one erp right people soft is one erp fine ban is one erp if you take tally is also one erp wings is also one erp microsoft dynamics Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce, right? Workday. So there are different, different ERPs are available in the market, right? Thousands, again, I'm telling you, thousands of ERPs are available in the market. But over all the ERPs, SAP is considered as the number one ERP, right? In the entire market, in the entire market, at, as per 2021 statistics, Almost all, 68% market is captured by, ERP market is captured by SAP. And it is expected by 2025, almost another 12%, 80% it going to be. And next, whatever 14% market is captured by Arkel. And other ERPs, the remaining, the remaining 68 plus, 14, 82, other 18 percent is spread across other ERPs. Okay, but what exactly ERPs? We know the definition, we know the abbreviation. What exactly? But how it's going to work? How it going to work ERP? Just we will see. One second. Yeah. As I mentioned, ERP is nothing but enterprise or business or organization or any entity. We'll talk about entity separately. Okay. What are the resources? As I said that, men, money, machine and marketing. What is planning here? Utilizing the resources in fuller extent and maximizing the profits by minimizing the cost. So this is how ERP works, right? Okay, but how it's going to work? What are the other ERPs? As I said that SAP is for all the departments in the organization, SAP. Arkil is for finance specialist. Ban is production and planning purchase specialist. JD Edwards is for sales. PeopleSoft is for HR specialist, right? So here, any organization, any organization there are uh, if it is take if it takes small organization there are several departments will be there like sales department inventory department production and planning department manufacturing department finance department hr department these are the minimum departments any company will have or any organization will have clear so these are the different departments and here when it comes to when it comes to softwares, the softwares are divided into two different types. Two different types. One is decentralized softwares. Another one, centralized softwares. decentralized softwares and centralized software. So here, what is the difference between decentralized software and this, we need to remember this again. So if we want to give a demonstration on SAP to the client, then we need to have a knowledge on these two parts. Clear? Even though we are not into marketing, 
but still after uh, after CAC, after taking licenses by the client then only we will pitch in but sometimes we need to explain what was the advantage over other erps when it comes to sap centralized erp so here as i mentioned here decentralized system software and centralized system software so what do you mean by decentralized system software okay where data maintained locally means what does it mean as i said that we have a different departments each department data will maintained independently each department say the finance department data will be there only with finance so sales department can't access or hr department can't access the data and same time sales department data with that uh, only that particular data will be there only with the sales department it will not accessed by any other department clear each department maintains their own data the other departments will not have access to other department information due to that there is no free flow of data from one department to another department because of lack of integration lack of integration one department can't access the information of other department so if okay if mine is a sales department i am having a information about my only sales department i don't have any information on finance then okay that then that is okay i i'm working on sales department then i am having a complete information of my sales then why i need to have a information about our data about other departments okay so for example if we take what is the disadvantage with the decentralized system software in the sense example a company is using ban for production okay for production and purchasing uh company is using ban erp and next one arkil for finance okay jd edwards for sales and people soft for hr there are, one company is using different different softwares in one particular organization then what would be the disadvantage if they are using it consolidation of data yes so here exactly so for example what is the drawback in the sense for example for example i am using different departments whatever departments i am having different departments i am using different different softwares so for example a customer came to sales department customer approached sales department he need one particular product on a priority urgent basis urgent basis he need so sales department is nothing but our front office or our uh, uh, what we call showroom or whatever you call so customer approached sales department for one particular product on an urgent basis right so here cust as i mentioned here customer approaches sales department from some product on an urgent basis and in showroom the product is not available in front office the product is not available sales department does not have a real time information on the availability of the product availability of the product so here sales department is not having the product in sales department and same time it is it doesn't have an information whether the product is available in the with the inventory department with or with the production and planning department clear in the go down or whatever you call the sales department doesn't have any information whether the product real time information it doesn't have whether the product is available in these two departments or not right so here it will check only in the sales department the product is not available then it will it want to check with the inventory department it want to check with the inventory department and as well as a production and planning department so either through call or through email or they have sent email to production and planning department and inventory department so here sales department does not have a real time information on the availability of the product so sales department will approach inventory department because that it doesn't know whether inventory department is having the product or not so for that they need to approach in a different ways either they can email it or they need to send a person okay it may take some time it may take some time to get the information from inventory department it will take uh, for sales department it will take some time because of that the customer may reach to other vendor because it kills the time of customer it kills the time of customer to get the information itself 
right? And we are not the monopolies in the market. So customer will get frustrated and he will go to the other vendor. And what is the disadvantage with this? It leads to loss of revenue because on time we are not able to make a revenue generation here. And same time, customer dissatisfaction. First impression is the best impression. And due to word of mouth, he will spread a negative publicity that if you go to that particular organization, we won't get correct information on time. Clear? So this would be a major disadvantage. First is we'll, uh, we are going to lose the revenue. And next one, customer dis dissatisfaction. So next, next time, in case the product is out of stock, in case the product is out of stock, then the sales team will approach to production and planning department to manufacture the product for future purpose, right? So what sales department has checked in with inventory department, whether the product is available or not. And here, due to some reason, the product is not available with the inventory department, right? So for future, the customer may come in future also. So that's the reason what sales department will approach is sales department will approach production planning department for the production, future production purpose. Clear? And the production and planning will check the availability of raw material, the availability to manufacture any particular product. They need some raw material. The production and planning will check for the availability of raw material to produce the product. Right? The raw material information separately maintained, separately maintained by production and planning department and as well as the inventory department. Both will maintain, production and planning department will maintain a raw material data separately and as well as inventory department will also maintain raw material data separately. Because they are not using centralized software, they are using decentralized software. This particular production and planning department using different software and inventory department is using different software. But this reporting structure is something different and its reporting structure is something different. So both are maintaining same information in a different, different ways. So what would be the disadvantage? The raw material information separately maintained by production and planning department and inventory department. This leads to data duplication. The same data both are maintaining. Okay. The same information both are maintaining. So here memory maintain saving a memory is more important in IT. Right? But the same information both are maintaining. So it leads to a data duplication, wastage of memory. And next, what is the other disadvantage? According to inventory department, according to inventory department database, the raw material is available. According to inventory uh, department database, the raw material is available. But according to production and planning department database, the raw material is not available. Right? So here, as per the inventory department, the raw material is available because both are maintaining different, different database. But as per the production and planning department database, the raw material is not available with them then what production planning department will do? Production and planning department will search for vendors who can supply the raw material and enters into an agreement with the vendor. Clear? What it will do? It will serve production planning department. We call it as in bias department or a procurement department or a sourcing department in general. Right? These people will search because according to them, there is uh, no raw material available. So, any department will rely on their database, not on other others department database. So production and according to procurement de department, the raw material is not available. So what immediately they will do, they will search for vendors. They'll ask for, invite for the quotations. So once the quotations are received and they will finalize with one vendor and they will enter into agreement with the vendor. So here as per the inventory, department, we have a raw material, but as per the production and planning department, we don't have a raw material, right? Due to this inventory cost goes up, even though we have a raw material, but we are again ordering, we are ordering. So what happens? We are not utilizing the available raw material. 
we are ordering excess raw material which leads to the inventory cost goes up okay so here inventory cost goes up so here the production and planning department gives the enter into an agreement with the vendor what and vendor will do is where once he receives the update from production and planning department vendor will supply the raw material to shop floor that is nothing but man plant or manufacturing unit and shop floor doesn't have any prior information that they are going to receive the raw material unless until vendor supplies the raw material so when raw material or inventory is received by shop floor they realize that the shortage of labor because they are not aware they are not aware that they are going to receive a raw material for the manufacturing of the product so once the raw material is received they need to produce some 100 or quantity so they realize that there is a shortage of labor to manufacture the product shop floor approaches to hr department shop floor ap approaches the hr department to recruit temporary labor to produce the product which will be higher than say they need an immediate basis so normally uh, we will get the labor at a higher price than the market rate so labor cost goes up due to this the labor cost goes up because we are recruiting a temporary labor for immediate purpose automatically the labor cost would be more so that's the reason the labor cost goes up so this is the another disadvantage so here shop floor will approach hr department for a labor and same time what is the other disadvantage in the sense production and planning department fails to update production and planning department fails to update the finance department on time regarding raw material which are purchased from vendor on credit so uh, whatever production and planning department has given order to vendor the same time that has to be updated to finance department because the finance department is going to pay the vendor but here due to decentralized the system software the production and planning department is not able to update the finance department on time regarding the credit purchases and finance department will not able to pay on time to vendor because that whatever agreement they have entered 30 days 45 days whatever so they are not able to pay the finance department is not able to the uh, not able to pay vendor on time it may leads to illegal actions and loss of reputation right the vendor may take us different legal actions and lot of loss of reputations same time we will lose our discounts some next time the same vendor may not supply on a credit base to us so this would be the disadvantage is us clear any questions on this decentralized system anyone have a questions on this no sir okay so here now when it comes to centralized system software centralized system that is nothing but your erp now so if a company maintains centralized system software then the data will be maintained at central level means centrally the data will be maintained not at department wise centrally it is maintained at central level and data will be shared with all the departments shared with all the departments and all the departments will have access to get the data of other departments which means the real time data can be access among all the departments right so that is a centralized system what is centralized system centralized system in the sense that data will be maintained centrally not locally and each department can have access to get the real time information for example the same example if i take see here this is a centralized department each department will link to to the centralized system software database right so here same example i am taking if a customer approaches sales department approaches sales department for one particular product on a urgent basis same 
customer reaches to sales department for some product and he needs on urgent basis right so what sales department sales department what sales department will do sales department will have a real time information about the availability of the product the data is updated by inventory department in centralized system sales department will be able to replies to customer on time which leads to increase in revenue and customer delight so here inventory department will update the data whether product is available or not if product is available then it will update and sales department will need not to approach inventory department it will check with the centralized system software which they have a access and immediately within fraction of second if the product is available then it replies to customer the product is available and they can generate this as an that, that will be converted this enquiry as a sales so which increases the revenue of the organization and customer satisfaction because he is getting information on the spot if the product is not available then also it can uh, replies to customer without killing his time it will replies immediately and same time in case the product needs to be manufactured for example the product is shortage right and in case product needs to be manufactured then sales department updates in centralized system for production of goods here here inventory department has uh, updated in centralized system and sales department has checked in centralized system only one product is available and that has been given to customer but here future it may come future future customers may come so that's the reason sales department will update the need of the product in centralized system not with the inventory not with the production it will update the requirement in centralized system okay in case the product product need to be manufactured then sales department updates in centralized system for production of goods production and planning department updates in centralized system about the requirements and checks for the availability of raw material which is updated by inventory department same thing both will up updates right inventory department will update the availability of raw material in centralized system so before giving order to vendor so first production and planning department will check in centralized system how much raw material is available whatever uh, request raised by sales department that much raw material is available or not with the organization that it will be checked okay does the data duplication here the data raw in earlier system the production department separately maintaining the raw material data and same time inventory department was also maintaining a data separately but here only one centralized data will be maintained okay thus which is updated thus the data duplication can be avoided right and accurate data will be available no duplication of data right same time if shop floor whatever shop floor we are calling shop floor will updates every time about the availability of labor force right no need they won't go to hr department they will update how many people how many how much labor is working in this particular shop floor shop floor updates the manpower status regularly in centralized system which can be accessed by hr department on a regular basis right in case of shortage of manpower then hr team will start process of recruitment on time to hire the suitable candidates at market price so because they knows that okay the product is coming so they need a labor so because they have a, already they have a information that there is a shortage of labor so immediately they'll start the recruitment right so with that they will get the labor on market price and skilled labor they are going to get it thus the labor cost will go down thus the labor cost will go down okay and same time vendor can submit vendor can submit their invoices because vendor can submit their invoices directly in centralized system which can be accessed by the finance department 
with that the finance department can make the payments on time to vendor because invoice is received on time finance departments aware that they need to pay okay so on time finance department can pay the vendor with that the possible legal actions can be avoided so this is about your centralized system that is a benefit means each and every resource we are utilizing in a fuller extent in success of organization any questions on this particular and everyone knows about it just i would like to uh, show you that how erp works actually there is a small uh, example i have taken so shop floor means go down right sorry shop floor means go down right go down or plant okay yeah where actually the manufacture take place any other questions so what is the main advantage give key benefits of erp system in the time the major thing is the real time information will flow between all the departments next one revenue generation data duplication can be avoided customer satisfaction labor cost will be reduced on time payments to vendor inventory cost can be reduced and legal actions can be avoided so these are the key benefits of erp system so this is the advantage with the centralized so there are two types of softwares we have decentralized system software majority earlier the majority organizations were using decentralized system software now almost all all the organizations are migrating from uh, uh, centralized system software even though i'm calling this as and see here we are calling other erps are arkel ban jd edwards people soft even though they are considering as an erp but they are going to give the solution end to end solution only for one particular department not for all the departments clear end to end department as i said yesterday also arkel will give you the solution complete finance department from start to end and ban will also give the solution from production procurement to purchase and production of the goods or services when comes to jd edward same it will receive enquiries from customer from start to end till sales happens revenue generation right people stuff hr so it will receive from a department that where is a requirement from requirement to hire onboarding so the end to end solution will be given but no org no erp no software is providing end to end solution for all the departments so that these these are the drawbacks for other erps when compared to sap so what is the advantage with the sap in the sense it will give the solution to all the departments no need to maintain a separate software separate erps for each department we can use only one centralized sap for all the departments so that was the reason it becomes more popular than any other erp is available even though it is little higher cost but any organization even though it is little higher cost but whatever requirement the organization or enterprise requires the everything it is providing the solution so that's the reason as i mentioned 68 to 78 it goes up next generation even the oracle is trying arkel is purchased now uh, this two jd edwards and ban microsoft has purchased people soft but even though sap is the leader for in erp segment as i mentioned it is the third largest non american company first largest but third when it compares to american but very soon in next or the other year it's going to be second largest organization not only in erp complete it so that is an advantage with the sap any questions yes no
No, sir. Yeah, I'm not getting it. Fine. So here I, I just go to some uh, late history of SAP. As I said, this particular SAP software was introduced in the year 1972. The first name, the first name was SAPD. The first name of SAP was SAPD as, okay. What is SAPD stands for? System Analysis and Program Development. Earlier it was considering it as a System Analysis and Program Development. There was only one client, as I said yesterday, there was only one client in the year 1972, which that was IBM client. What was the first client of SAP was Imperial Chemical Industry, which is which was German based company, which was German based company. There was only one client, as I said yesterday, there was a, this particular client was in the year 1965, 1665. This particular project was taken by the IBM due to some reason they have dropped to this particular project. They have dropped and this particular projects again taken care by those five ex IBM employees. They used develop programs for payroll and accounting. The first project SAP was done on only it is restricted not like end to end of other organization. It was started working on payroll and accounting project. So what is the main advantage, the advantage in the sense here instead of storing the data on punch cards mechanically. So earlier in the before 1972, the data was used to store manually on punch cards. Punch cards uh, like not only IBM other companies used to Microsoft and other companies used to store the data on punch cards. And here in 1972, they came up with new storage system that started storing it locally in electronic system while using common logical database for all activities of organization. This is a big achievement. Means instead of storing the data in punch cards, they came up with a disk type, like a floppy disk, hard disk, compact disk. So they came up with those uh, technologies. And in the year 1970, the first uh, disk technology concept was introduced by SAP system. Okay. Therefore, they called their software as a real-time system. Therefore, they called as a real-time system. It was known as an R1 system. It was known as R1 system. First of all, we will talk what is R1. What is R1? The first concept came up with SAPD was R1 system. What is R1? R1 is nothing but here R stands for real time. R stands for real time. One stands for single tire system. Single tire system. What is single tier system? So for example, what is one tier in the sense? one tier system in the sense, for example, there is three layers will be there. Normally any, if we want to do any uh, data, if we want to store or we need to retrieve. Okay. Then we have database layer, database layer, next one application layer and third one presentation layer. Okay, so database layer where data stores. Application layer is nothing but where the process happens. And presentation layer, nothing but the output device, nothing but our screens or mobile screen or whatever it is, or we can call it as a GUI graphical user interface. So here in the year 1972, in the year 1972, they came, this is the real time system. Earlier, there was no system like this. They used to store manually like a file system. So whenever we want to have some information, then we need to go to that punch cards. We need to open and we need to check it. It used to take a lot of time. But here in one tier system, they came up with 
three uh, this one three layers database layer application layer and presentation layer so here what has happened is once we input the data we save the data that will be stored in database layer clear whenever we want to view then we can view on our presentation layer so here till in the year 1972 to 80 the era called r1 era 1972 to 80 even though we are calling real time but all the database layer application layer and a presentation layer are at one place are at one place one place that is the reason we call it as a tier one what does it mean for example i want some information i want to see and the complete this particular for example i need some i need to do some bank information i want to check my balance i want to check my bank balance so in the year 1972 80 even though it was working on three tier uh, three layers but if i want to check my balance then what i need to do i need to go to my bank and over there i can get the real time information over there i can get unless until if i won't go to the bank i won't get the information what i need to do I, if i want to check my what is my balance my, what is my status of account then first i need to visit my bank in the bank only all the three layers will be there the presentation layer application layer and the database layer all three layers are at one place means if we want to go then it will for example i'll take you one more example for example in your laptop you have a laptop right that is your front end screen is nothing but your presentation layer right and you are saving uh, for example i want to see your resume i want to see your resume which is in your system right you have updated everything and you have saved the process of saving and everything will be done by the application and where it's going to save it's going to save in your hard disk that is nothing but your database layer your front end screen whatever output screen is there laptop screen that is called a presentation layer and whatever process you are doing some changes and everything and you are saving it then that is considered as an application layer and where it's going to save which folder you are going to save then that is and at the end it is going to save in database layer that is called hard disk right for example you don't have any internet you don't have internet and we are almost at 10 kilometers away we are 10 kilometers away on priority i want to view your resume how can i view how can i view your resume or any other information which is there in your system what is a possible way? Hello. What are the possibilities? Got my point? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What is a possible way? As I said, every the complete data is in your system and you don't have any internet uh, access to uh, share the information. Uh, but I want that particular information to be viewed. What can I do? Because the database layer at your place, the application layer at your place and the presentation layer is also at your place. So what is the so what I can do only one thing that I need to come to your place and over there I can check it. Is that correct or not? Yes. Sir. Okay. So here in the first 1972 to 80, the first one tier system, even though they came up with the real time information. So whatever data you have saved that the real time data you have saved, right? Even though we are getting a real time information in R1 system, but what is the drawback in the sense that is not able to viewed by centrally. Okay. So we need to come to the, we need to go to that particular place. Then only we can view this complete process. So here, and they came up with in R1 system, R1 system is not R again. I'm reiterating R stands for real time. One stands for one tier and they developed with one currency and it is not, uh, 
what it is a, a, absolutely a flopped version this r1 why in the sense they have developed with one currency and one language this particular r1 system okay r1 is nothing but real time one is nothing but one tier one tier in the sense all the layers will be at one place clear and what is the other disadvantage in the sense even though it is uh, have a real time information but that will not be accessed by the other person remotely and same time it is developed only on one currency that is german currency and german language so this particular software is useful only for one particular country one particular uh, the companies which are using german language and only german currency clear so that is r1 so that due to that r1 is not that success and they came up with one more in the year 1980 they came up with one more update were updated version r2 as i said that r1 is a single tier which means stand alone system example pc 1972 the in the early 80s they have released one more version called r2 the same thing r is nothing but a real time 2 is nothing but two layers two layers it it is a mainframes architecture so with this we came up with client structure client server concept they in r2 only they came up with client server concept what is client server concept in the sense they came up with in 1972 in r1 they are having only one currency and one language but when it comes to r2 they came up with i'll explain what is r2 exactly so here r stands for real time and two stands from two okay two tiers two stands for two tiers and it is came up with came up with multinational customers it is came up with the concept of multinational customers handling different languages and different currencies earlier it was only one currency and one language but they came up with different languages and different currencies and r2 so what is r2 what is r2 in the sense here you can see this is r1 system so here this is called your presentation layer this is called your application layer and this is called your database layer all are at one place all are at one place means if anyone wants to get the information then they need to come to this particular place and we can get it but here in r2 version 1980 what they did is they have separated presentation layer with database and application layers they have separated the presentation layers that is nothing but your guis they have separated with database and application layer so in r2 system r2 that is the reason two layers right so here one layer is presentation layer and the other layer is your database and application layer so here the database layer is linked with your local area network or wide area network or metro area network so the this these integ these are integrated or connected with the server the uh, what we call the presentation all the presentation layers are integrated or connected to the database layer and application layer through local area network or a wide area network or a metro area network clear so this is considered these are considered as an clients so whatever presentation layers are there those are considered as an clients and the database and application layers are considered as an server the first time concept client to server concept came up in the year 1980 that is also with sap only clear so what is the even they came up with again i am mentioning they came up with multi currencies and multi languages so any country they can use sap right and any language they can use not only one language 40 earlier they have started with 44 languages sorry 47 languages in the r2 version but here what is a disadvantage in r2 system in the sense for example client a client b client c right client a client b client c wants to access the same data from one particular database 
A, B, C has given same requirement in their present with the presentation layer, right? Same time they have given, they want to retrieve the data from this particular database. And they have given same time. But here there was a concept called time sharing concept. Time sharing concept. What do you mean by time sharing concept in the sense? First minute will be given to client A. Second minute will be given to client B. Third minute will be given to client C. I'm taking only three clients. Means if these three clients are entered, wants to retrieve the data, then first the day information will go to client A and after that it will go to client B and after that it will go to client C. Even these two clients are idle. They, are, they don't want the information, but it has to wait for its turnaround time. Client C has to wait for its turnaround time. So probably you would have seen earlier, like whenever Usmania University or any other university declares their result, if we try to get the result on time, then we need to wait for a lot of time. Either sometimes we used to get server busy. Clear? So that concept was there earlier. That is called R2 concept. Whenever it is showing server busy or something, then they are using R2 concept. Right? So here there was a time sharing concept over here. Is this clear? Everyone, any questions? Yeah. Yes, no. No, no. Yeah, I'll go with the next. So here in the year 90s, so that the, due to the time sharing concept and all, majority clients doesn't want to go with the this two this concept. But in the year 90s, they came up with a concept called R3 concept. R3 concept. That is nothing but same client server concept only. Okay. From mainframes computing to three tier architecture of database. Three tier. They came up with R same real time. Three is nothing but three tiers. What is three tiers of database? One is application database layer, application layer and user interface. Okay. The client server architecture is standard in business software, any organization from 91 onwards, we are using the same business standard business software. As we know that first layer, we call it as a presentation layer or second layer, we call it as an application layer and third layer, we call it as a database layer. Presentation layer is nothing but your GUI, your screen, mobile screen, your laptop screen or any other screen. Next one, application server, where SAP is installed, application is installed. Next one, database layer, where database is installed, data is installed, data is saved. Okay, those are the three different layers. So here, what has happened? What happened here? So in 3 tier structure, the presentation layer separated, application layer separated, and database layer separated. So three layers are separated. Clear? So here, application layer, for example, if you have your mobile phone, for example, either you are using Android or iOS, right? So for example, if I want to install, if I want to install WhatsApp or any other in Android, so what I'll do, I'll go to a Play Store, right? That is called your Play Store is nothing but an application layer. Whatever mobile screen, that is nothing but your presentation layer. So what you will do, you will type WhatsApp installation. So the application layer will process and where the WhatsApp data is stored, it will request from that particular database. And immediately it will install in your mobile phone. Either that could be iOS or any other. So an application layer in your Android phone is your app store and Play Store or whatever. See, App Store is in iOS and Play Store is in Android. In the same way, application layer, presentation layer and database layers are in different, different places. So what happens? Presentation layer will input 
the data, whatever data we require. So the application layer will receive it and it will process. So your appli present application layer will have a capacity to receive n number of instructions per seconds. n number of instructions per seconds. Okay. And it will give the output. It will pick the data from database, accurate database, and it will provide the solution to presentation layer. So that's the reason the three tire structure still three tire structure is most successful structure. And the real time concept, the first real time concept was introduced by SAP. Earlier, before that, there was no concept called real time concept. The client server concept was introduced by SAP. Any questions? Any questions? So here R1, R2, R3 architecture, we need to have a knowledge, not uh, as an interview point of view or something else, but how the structure works, SAP structure or any other ERP structure works or any software structure works. So what is R1, R2 and R3? So now, as I said that S4 HANA, so this is third till R3 is nothing but our third generation. So S4 HANA till EC6, we are using R3 structure only. But now we came up with the in-memory concept. That is nothing but S4 HANA. As I said that four stands for fourth generation or suit for HANA. Means whatever application module we are using, that is suit for HANA database. So that we will see in depth what exactly is for HANA database when we discuss about uh, this uh, versions of SAP, different versions of SAP in tomorrow's session. Any questions still here? I'm going to share this PPT also once we are done with the versions part. Yeah, anyone have a questions or something? No, sir. Okay. So tomorrow we will see with the uh, client server concept a uh, little bit in depth. And next we are going to discuss tomorrow with the versions, different versions of, of SAP. And again, we are going to dis discuss uh, tomorrow, what are the different, not projects exactly, why SAP? Why every company wants, again, we know that why SAP? Because it, it integrates uh, each and every department closely. And what are the different modules? What are the different modules in SAP? In tomorrow's session, we'll discuss. Clear? How it is differentiated between functional modules and technical modules and where we will fit and other things we'll see in tomorrow's sessions. Any other questions from anyone before we do? So that you said that uh, OU like we'll get in uh, server error, right? Correct. So it's like OU will follow the R2 structure. In now it's probably it's not. Probably now we are getting on time immediate. They have changed. Now I took only OU as an example because we are from other universities also at that particular point of time, they were using R2 only. Majority. So simple in uh, railway reservation counters, right? Bus reservation counters. Earlier they were using R2 system only. Now it is not R2. It's an R3 only. The real time we can do the this thing. Because why it is getting lagged in the sense because of your RAM capacity, because of your hard uh, system process capacity, it will take time, not for the server access. For example, you are having a 2 GB RAM mobile, right, with the 64 GB, then obviously it will be a little slower when compared to 8 GB RAM mobile phone. But the structure, what is the structure they are following? R3 only. Hope you got my point. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. Yes. I took only OU as an example, but at that particular point of time, all the reservation counters or whatever it is, it was using the same R2 concept only. 
Okay. Time sharing concept. That was time sharing concept. We call it as an, even though it is a client server concept, but each client will have dedicated time to access the data from the server. But now there is no time because in between there is an application layer uh, from the client, it will take the information and it get the information from the database and immediately it will. Like how you are doing in your mobile phone. Now in your mobile phone, we are following R3 system. And now the mobiles are came up with the Fiori apps. SAP is now mobile phones. We can use our reports and everything we can view in our mobile phones also with the introduction of S4. Clear? That we will discuss in our next session. Till now we have saw in our mobile R3 structure. But in future we are going to this S4 also. Means all the tiles and all the requests, all the orders you can generate from your mobile on the SAP. Any other questions from anyone? Okay then. Thank you. See you tomorrow session. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, sir.